Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube, and in this video, we are going to look at URL parameters for paginated reports and how those can help you get around some gnarly situations. Stay tuned. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. All right, URL parameters inside of paginated reports. This is now available in the service, so that means that I can actually put parameters on the URL string to automate some of the functionality for this. And that's the big reason why you would wanna use this is because you can now automate the passing of parameters as well as the export format. So if you wanted to get it as you know an Excel file, a CSV, a PDF for your actual pixel perfect paginated report, you can do that. So let me break down what this would actually look like from a URL perspective. So you'll start out with your base URL. So this is the URL that, you know, if you just browse to that report inside of the Power BI service, you'll get that URL. So it'll have the GUID for the workspace, it'll have the GUID for the actual report itself, and that's your base URL, right? That's the, the URL for the report itself. Then what we can do is tack on parameters to that query string. So this is done using RP colon, and then the name of the parameter that you defined inside of the paginated report, and then pass it the value. And you can just tack those on using the ampersand. I also mentioned you can decide what that export format will be. And so what you can do is tack on RS colon format and specify the format that you want to export as. The documentation lists out all the items that are available to export. So whether it's Excel, CSV, PDF, and so on. So definitely check that out to figure out what it is you wanna do. All right, there's one specific scenario, which was the reason behind me personally wanting the ability to pass in parameters and whatnot into the URL string. And it's a little selfish of me, but I think it will really help you in a given particular scenario that you may be hitting as well. So enough of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop and let me show you what this is. All right, I've got a Power BI report that is set up here. I've got a couple different pages on this report. So let me go ahead and show you the pain point first. I'll go to too many rows and we will look at this report by default with no slicers. It's showing that my table, the sales row, is actually the row count that's going to be underneath the hoods for the actual table that you see here. So I did what a lot of customers do, right? I wanna put a table on my report and it's got some data inside of it. And in this case, it's got a lot of data, right? 2.8 million rows that are displayed in the table itself. That's a lot of rows. The actual sales table itself has got 25 million rows inside of it but what is actually being shown underneath the hoods here is actually 2.8 million rows. And I know a lot of customers want to have tables or matrices inside the report. We go for that Excel-like feel. I'm gonna be a little sensible here, right? I know that 2.8 million rows is a lot, right? I don't wanna do anything you know, that big. And what I wanna do, my end goal here, is I wanna export this table, right? Because I wanna export it to CSV or Excel and then open it up in Excel and do a pivot table on it, right? Most customers wanna do that. So I'm gonna filter this down a little bit and I'm gonna say, look, I just wanna look at 2014 sales, right? Because I'm a sensible guy. And that brings it down to 506,600 rows that are underneath this. All right, cool, that's way better than 2.4 million or whatever. So let me go ahead and then I will export this data Uh-oh, I get the dreaded error saying, look, my data exceeds the limit and my data is too large. Some data sampling may occur. There is a limitation of 150,000 rows here and anything past that is gonna get truncated, right? So you're not gonna get all the data. Power BI Desktop actually shows you this error message. And so anything over that 150,000 rows, you can see here I've got 506,000. Those are gonna not be in the exported data. What? That's insane. The other thing to notice here is if you go over to the Power BI service, and if I go to that report, let's do the same thing over there. We'll filter it down by 2014. Let me go ahead and export it. I'll just do the summarized data. We'll go and export that. It actually exported. It's still doing the truncation. You'll only see 150,000 rows. Watch, let's open that up. All right, and if I highlight this column, you'll see down below 500 or 150,000 in three rows. That's because of those three header rows up top. It's 506,000 rows. 
but I only got 150,000 and in the service, it doesn't warn you about that. What do we do? My end goal is I wanna export this data. Enter in paginated reports with URL parameters. So what I've got here is another report page where what I did is I added some export icons onto the page and these are buttons on the report. And so what I can do there is when I hover over them, actually, let me go back to the service here and show you. We'll go over there and we'll filter it down by 2014. And then I've got some buttons here for exporting. So let's say that I just wanna export it to CSV. I'll go and hit that. It's gonna go and execute the paginated report. It's gonna run that report with those parameters passed in. And then I get the export. And bam, there's our export. So if we go and open that up in Excel, and we'll go ahead and look at the sales order data column. And down below, you will see the count of 506,601. That one is the header row. So I got all the rows from my Paginet report. What? That's amazing. I can get all the rows that I want by using Paginet reports and URL filters. Ah. All right, so let's figure out how to wire all this up. All right, the first thing you've got to do is get your Power BI report all set up, right? So we need to get our data model in line and maybe create your base report because that's going to tell you what you're actually going to need to create on the paginated side. So in this case, I created a table and I said that, look, this is the table that I'm going to want. And if I look at the table, I know the actual fields that are going to be used. And I have a slicer here that's going to dictate what the parameter is that I'm going to pass into that Paginet report. It may be a slicer. It may be something on, maybe you've got a filter or something that you're going to use, and that's going to get passed in. Once you have your report, you're going to publish that to the Power BI service because we need to get that data model in the service because we're going to use that data model as the data source for my Paginet report as well. Once that's done, let's go ahead and we're going to head over to the paginated report and we're gonna go ahead and then we're gonna right click and say add Power BI dataset connection. And then we're gonna choose the data set that we want, which is my paginated URL parameters. We'll hit select and then bam, I've got my data source, right? So I'm connected to that data model that I'm using for my Power BI report. I'm gonna use the same data model with my paginated report. That's gonna make sure we're looking at the same actual data. If you pointed this to like maybe a SQL server and maybe Power BI report was getting data from that SQL server, there could be a difference between the data if the data set in Power BI wasn't refreshed and it's not up to date. So just be aware of that. You've got options, just figure out what's gonna work best for you. All right, so I've got my data source, but now I need to create my data set. So these are the queries that I'm gonna use against the AS data model. And you know how we roll. We're not lazy, we're just efficient. Sure, I could hand type all that DAX for that query to get it. But what we can do is go back to the Power BI report. We could come into the view tab, go to performance analyzer, start recording, refresh the visuals. And I've got my matrix here. I can expand that, say copy query, and then boom, I've got my query. So one thing you're gonna wanna do, I'm gonna open up DAX Studio here and I'm gonna connect to my Power BI data set because we need to do some cleanup of this DAX statement. So let's go ahead and paste this in. And we'll see, okay, this is cool. We're passing in the actual parameter up top and we're doing like a summarized columns in here. So what I wanna do just to clean this up, we're gonna get rid of the top end. And I'm gonna get rid of, I just want the summarized columns itself. So we're gonna get rid of the rolling subtitle as well. All right, and then we'll say, yep, sort it by, or order it by the company name. That's cool. And if we go and run that, it's gonna come back and give me everything I need, but this is just the company name rollup. So in my actual exported data, one thing you'll see in my reports is if we come back, I can expand that and I will see the actual sales order number. So I need that sales order number as part of it. So if we copy that query again, now that it's expanded, or sorry, we wanna get the other one, that ran, copy that query, go back into DAX Studio, we'll paste that, we'll do the same thing. So here we've got some additional data because it's doing some, you know, it's doing a little more work. Again, I just want the summarized columns. So let's get rid of all this other stuff. Let's do our cleanup and also get rid of this because we're not using it anymore. And let's go ahead and run it. All right, now we can see we've got company name, sales order number, total sales and total quantity. So this is our actual query that we're gonna use for the main data set in the actual 
report itself, the paginated report. There's another item that I need to get here. So the other thing I'm gonna grab is my slicer. So let's go ahead and copy that. All right, this one looks good, right? I don't really need to do any fix up here. So that one's good to go. So now what I'm gonna do, go back over to my paginated report and I'm gonna create a data set. So this one is going to be my calendar year. I'm gonna call it years. We'll choose our data source. This is now an AS data source, so I have to do query designer. Once I'm in that designer, I'm gonna switch it off of the design view. Go back to DAX Studio. We're gonna copy our year query from our slicer and paste it in. Then hit okay. All right, that's done. We'll hit okay there. Now I've got my years data set. What I'm gonna do now is create my parameter because what I wanna be able to pass in is the actual year. So we'll say year and it's text, that's fine available values, I'm gonna say get the values from a query, I'll say years, and then hit okay. So now I've got my parameter in my report that I can pass in that year. And in this case, I'm gonna have the setup of I'm only ever gonna pass in one year to this parameter. You can set this up to do multiples. It's gonna take a little bit of extra work, but that is an option for you. All right, let's add in that last data set. This one, I'm gonna call it sales data from the same data source, query designer. Again, we're gonna flip off the design view, go back to DAX Studio, copy our query, paste that bad boy in, and hit okay. Or actually, before we hit okay, we gotta set up the parameters. So let me go to the parameters button. We'll call it year. The dimension is gonna be calendar. Hierarchy is gonna be calendar year, which is that field, and the default is gonna be all. Hit OK, and then we're going to swap out the 2014 for at sign year. And now we're passing in that filter, so let's go ahead and hit OK. All right, and that's done. Bam. And like a cooking show, let's go over to the finished product. And what I did was I just added an actual table to the actual report page itself. You can do that by going to insert, and then I just went through the table wizard. I'm mainly using this for export, so it doesn't have to look you know, incredibly pretty. But if you wanted this as a, as a functional report and or if, like my Power BI report also, I didn't, I just threw a table on there, right? I didn't spend time making it actually right. So you can actually, if for a production report, actually take that time to do that, it is important. But for this, we're just doing a demo. I've got everything lined up. And at this point, you can publish this to the Power BI service itself. A couple different ways you can do that. You can do file, save as, and I can go right to the Power BI service or you can do that from within inside of the workspace and upload the, the RDL file. So now my report is there. So what we've got to do is we've got to go back to our workspace. Once it's published, go to reports. You'll see here I have the two different reports in my workspace. The icons tell me which one it is. So the top report is a Power BI report. The bottom report is that paginated report. So let's go into that paginated report. What we need to get is that base URL. So this is the URL of my report. So this specific URL, it's gonna be a static item, right? So if you've got multiple tables, one of the challenges is you're gonna to have to set this up for each one of those tables, right? So it's a little bit of work, and if things change, you gotta make sure you gotta go and update it, but the end result is really awesome. So once I've got that base URL, now I can go make some DAX. And so what I did, let me jump over to my port view, and I've got some fields here. The first one is my base export URL. All right, so I'm passing in whatever that year is. That's the select, I'm using a selected year measure that's just doing a selected value. I can come over to my calendar table and we can see my selected year measure is pretty simple. I'm just doing whatever that selected year is. So that's gonna grab the filtered view of that table. So in this case, 2014, all right? And so once I've got that and I've got my base URL, I'm just gonna concatenate the two together. And you'll see here on the end of it, I've got RP colon year equals, and I'm gonna tack in 2014. Then I've got a measure for each of the export items that I want to support. So you don't have to support all of these. You could just have CSV, for example, and that's fine. And so for each one of these, what I'm doing is I'm taking whatever that base URL is, and I'm concatenating on the RDL colon format query string parameter to indicate what is that export format that I want. In this case, CSV, and then for PDF, we can look at that. We can see we've got PDF. For Excel format, right now it's Excel Open XML. I believe they're gonna be working on fixing that up so where you can just pass in Excel. So keep your eye on the documentation and the blog post. 
to check out it once that is available, but you would have Excel open XML for now, or at least at the recording of this video. All right, so once all that's done, then I can actually take advantage of them. What I did, because I can use dynamic URLs for my button actions. So here I've got icons that I placed on the report, and then I laid over a blank button on top of it so I can get that kind of hover effect. And when I select the one, so I'll select the Excel, if we go, let's close performance analyzer, we'll go down to action. And what you can see here is for the web URL, I can hit, there's a little ellipsis button here. It's kind of, it's a little hard to see. I can go to conditional formatting. And what I did there is I said, use that Excel export URL for the value of this action for the URL that's gonna go across. If I just drag that onto the canvas and turn that to a card, you can see the URL itself. So let me see if I can get this. All right, so you can see here the year. So I didn't, so let me select the year here, 2014, bam. There's my RP colon year 2014, Excel open XML. If I go to 2015, bam, there's my URL, right? So it's dynamically getting updated, which is awesome. And then I can use that conditional formatting to use that dynamic URL and put that use that as the value of the action. You can hard code a, a base URL if you know that that's what you wanna do. You can do that. You don't have to write all the DAX to wire this up, but this is a way that we can do this. Once all that's there, I can publish that report to the service. And when I hit those buttons, I get the export. One other thing to realize here, go back, is when I select these buttons, the behavior of it, what it's gonna do is it's actually gonna open another browser tab and actually render that actual paginated report in the browser and then export it. So it's a little jarring for end users because what would be ideal is if it just, you know, just downloaded the item and never showed that paginated report. That's actually the behavior if you're using on-premises reporting services or Power BI report server, you would see kind of like a flash, but you would never actually see that other tab with that report. It would just download the actual export. But if you're using a Power BI paginated report, this is the experience that you're going to get. That is pretty awesome, right? I can wire all this up, I can get the export that I want, and I get all the data along with it. <sighs> what do you guys think? I wanna hand this off to you. Let me know down in the comments below. Does this seem useful? Is it something that actually solves a problem that you may have had? What other scenarios can you think of for using URL parameters with paginated reports. Let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.